In this video, I'm going to show you how we can make small IoT devices using the common available parts. This is a battery holder with a DS18B20 sensor. This is a temperature sensor with waterproof probe. But this is not just a battery holder. It is actually an IoT device. The part of this device is the Wi-Fi chip based on ESP8266. It also has a boost converter that will boost the battery voltage from 3.7 to 5 volts and a 3.3 regulator here. Instead of using this kind of dev boards, which is bulky, big, and you know, not really lean or small enough that you can fit on any casing or a limited space, it's good if we will use some bare boards. Like this kind of boards. This is a bare board of ESP8266, the same, the, one, the same with this one, the one that I've used in this project. So, if we're going, we're going to plan to use this kind of board, how shall we do it? It's very common for you to see this kind of dev boards. These are node MCUs, and the ESP8266 is actually soldered there. What I do is, I desolder this so that I can have access on the pins and the peripherals. We need this USB to UART converter so we can load the firmware. So we, we it's very ideal that we retain the parts here and just remove this part. So this is actually not soldered there. It's just spaced with a something like a adhesive there. So the idea here is we will use the essential pins here. You will solder it from that point to that point one by one. So we can solder it even if it's not connected there. Or we can program it. I mean, what I mean is we can program it even if it's not soldered here. Or you can actually program it first here before you remove it. But of course, sometimes there are bugs so you need to reprogram it. So to do that, you need to hook again this board to this essential uh, pins. So what are those essential pins? These are the essential pins. The reset, you need to put that on 3.3 volts so that it will not be on reset. Uh, the enable, you need to put it on 3.3 volts so the, the, the code will actually execute. You need the supply, the 3.3, the ground. You also need the IO15 to be on ground. And then the IO2 to be pulled up. And then the IO0. As you see here on the note, the IO0, if it's pulled up, it's normal running. The firmware flash on it will just execute normally but if it's low it will start it, it should go on the programming mode these are the essential pins that need to be set up for your ESP8266 to operate even if it's not on this board so if you look at on this board it is actually set up that way but you know, there are fancy wires there. But if you will look at if you look at the back of it, you can actually see those interconnections. The IO fifteen, the IO two, the IO zero, the ground, the BCC. This one is for the sense the temperature sensor so it's not really part of the requirement for the ESP8266 to operate the enable and then the reset then they all are connected to the BCC so yeah these are the essential parts for you to be able to run your bare ESP8266 chip I will have a separate video on how this thing operates um, it sends uh, temperature data online. I'm using um, an IoT platform so that I can have a graph of what temperature it is reading. So, yeah. 
So this is a nit if you want to build this kind of stuff. You just need to be aware of those things. And if you think that this video is useful and informative and it helped you, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe on my channel. Bye!